welcome back everyone and it's time to go balls deep today we are covering black clover and you guys know what that means <laughs> We as Magic Knights are so powerful, the mana you're providing me as the Wizard King is incredible. We actually hit 35,000 likes on our last Black Clover video, which means we hit the goal. We surpassed our limits. <laughs> So as a reward, I will be covering part 3 of the Anti-Magic Devil video next week. Which means you need to make sure your notifications are turned on for the channel. And give me even more mana because balls deep prediction magic takes a lot of energy and effort. So fam, let's hit another 30,000 likes on this video, why don't we? Yes. Yes. Yes! Come to Papa! By the way guys, due to the difficult times and all, this video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. They help make it possible for us to keep making these videos for everyone to be financially stable. So, I'm sorry that we have to do this, but please hear it out. Before we start, we'd like to thank our sponsors ExpressVPN, who is hooking you guys up with a special discounted membership including 3 months for free. We have our special link in the description and comment section below. If you guys are not using a VPN or do not know what this is, then honestly, you are not using the internet properly. ExpressVPN protects you from hackers who try to steal your private information. They also protect you from your own internet service provider, preventing them from spying on your day-to-day -day activities, logging in and then selling them to third parties. With ExpressVPN, you are more protected than wearing a mask and gloves during this mad time. And talking about these crazy times, we are all locked indoors. Some of us were bored out of our minds, but with ExpressVPN, you'll be able to access content from all around the world, which usually might not be available in your region. Like, you know how you go to Netflix? Netflix, Amazon or any other streaming service and a certain anime isn't available for you or even movies and TV shows, well just change your VPN country to the one you want and you can watch all the anime you want across the world. And yes, it's legal, I checked the terms and services. So I want everyone to make sure you guys keep yourself protected and safe in all ways of life, starting by clicking on our link in the description and comment section below or go on the link expressvpn.com slash abd, finding out how you guys can get 3 months for free. They also have a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's nothing to lose. So chapter 247 of Black Clover starts off with the citizens of the Heart Kingdom in utter panic due to the arrival of Varnacle and the Dark Disciples. Believe it or not, the remaining four of the Spirit Guardians got off screen defeated and lose without giving a challenge. Hey yo, what the fuck? This caused a stir in the community because fans are split on how they feel about this. I for one want to make sure we head into the right direction by being honest with one another. Honesty should be the best policy. With that being said, can I point something out now? No! In chapter 247, the Heart Queen stated if the Guardians are defeated, then no one can possibly hope to win, meaning they were in fact the strongest, put together maybe even equal to even her. Which wouldn't make any sense if she's the Queen, who Mimosa said was strong enough to rival the power of all the Clover Magic Knights only 6 months ago. So how the hell did they all get defeated so quickly by one member of Vonica's team? That don't make no sense. I mean, how on earth did all the four Guardians got bodied off screen? no less by these disciples. We can argue that their stage is never guaranteed a win since it does not measure ability as proven by Sekri when she saves Asta in chapter 226. However, stages aside, aren't they supposed to be insanely strong? The Heart Queen literally says no one can win if the Spirit Guardians are defeated, meaning she's implying that they're the primary defense of the country. I mean, if they got at least one scratch on the disciples or were at least introduced prior to this event, I feel the backlash for their defeat wouldn't be so widespread. However, this is not the case for some reason. It will hopefully be explained later on on how they got yeeted so easily. This bitch is empty. Yeet! <laughs> Now, some fans wish that the spirit guardians should have been introduced and fleshed out since Garja is the sexy beast in the anime that we all love. Yes, I'm calling him sexy, no homo, right? No! His introduction not only implemented a new power scaling system, it helped understand magic, expand the Black Clover universe, and create hype. Hype that fans now feel hasn't been fulfilled now. Most fans feel like this. 
Anyway, Noel reassures the Heart Queen that the others will be fine after she attempts to summon them back inside the palace. Noel takes on the Heart Queen's role of being the leader, possible foreshadowing of her eventual death as per Medrucula's curse, and also highlighting the fact that Noel is kinda like her mother where she is this great leader and role model taking on actions and reassuring her comrades that this is possible, we can win this war. She claims to the Heart Queen that she has to focus on protecting the country as her power is needed. She basically tells her to stop being a scared little bitch. <laughs> Luck then encounters one of these disciples. His name is Svenkin with 50% devil power. Mind you, the strongest disciple we've seen thus far, which by the way, Gederois, the disciple from chapter 235, he says the disciples can go up to 40% as if there were none above him. Is it more proof of him being a freaking meathead or a plot That don't make no sense. Moving on, Svenkin attacks a woman and her child with Luck saving them both. Luck asks Svenkin why he's attacking the Heart Kingdom, which in turn sparks a swamp in ideology. Similar to the moments of chapter 230 and 236 where Asta and Yuno declared their conflicting ideologies against the Spardian army as they are the light triad. Svenkin's literal reasoning for murdering innocent is to simp for Vonica. Simp! Simp! As she is the strongest and the most beautiful woman who inspires him. Luck then proceeds to call him out for this as it is a shallow reason to hurt others. Oh. By the way, a little criticism here, and remember that honesty is the best policy. Be honest, guys. We have to create a great community. You guys are gonna get this to 30,000 likes, right? Just say what you want in the comments because I have something to say, and that is regarding the characterization behind Svenkin. It's pretty repetitive. It seems the Dark Disciples are being used as an obvious plot device to evoke pivotal moments for our heroes. The key moments between Asta and Yuno in chapter 230 and 236 respectively parallel each other to emphasize their relationship and similar mindset. However, while I appreciate the development of love, it's brought out by blatant repetition in dialogue and poor characterization. Tobata can bring home his point of the devil corruption in the Spardaeans more without their motivations being linked to the fact that they are evil for the sake of being evil. Of course! Now, now, calm down everyone. I know you're about to rage in the comments. Oh, yeah! Oh my god! Anime mostly. Why don't you dig right black love a bit more? I hate you now. Look everyone, as the wizard king, you should be able to criticize the things you love. Being a true friend to the kingdom means telling the truth to those you care about. That's what friendship is and I care about you guys and I want to take this community to the right direction. Like if I had a bad hair day where the barber fucked me up fam, I want you to tell me so I don't go back to that barber, you get what I'm saying? Anyway, Locke gets absolutely bodied by Mr. Simp and proclaims he will protect others as he is a magic knight. It appears Locke is now using his bloodlust for the protection of others and not just for selfish reasons. Locke sharing the ideology of the light tribe can emphasize on Asta's impact on everyone as his ideology is spreading to others as well. As we all know, the Black Clover manga has kept showcasing how Asta has this effect on people. Continuing on to chapter 248 with Locke and Magno visiting the Heart Kingdom as Asta claims he brought them because their natural magic types are perfect for Heart Kingdom training techniques, Asta mentions trying to include Zora but as we know which is confirmed by Magno Magna here, Zora is just way too introverted for group training, in another country no less. Get the fuck out of my room and play Minecraft! Magna even states that Zora should stick with peasants like us, pretty much foreshadowing their eventual friendship. Gorja then interjects by saying he will now show them the technique of using runes, which Magna instantly fails to do. Mission failed! We'll get him next time. Gorja then tells Magna his mana is too low, making him only stage 5, which is a stage higher than Sekri who is also arcane by the way, however she's of ancient nobility and has a large mana pool but is still lower than Magna in the power skating system. So this can prove once again that the stages are not the end all be all of a mage's power in Black Clover's power scaling. Anyway, Gorja continues that a mage needs to be at least stage 3 to even use runes. Mind you, Mimosa was this rank pre time skip and she has a lot of mana as a royal. Magna walks out of the heart palace like a bitch with her pride and Locke says if he lets this stop him from getting stronger it means he wasn't even worth it. Now we have to remember that these two have a brotherly rivalry and Locke saying this 
isn't out of spite but more out of disappointment. However, using balls deep prediction magic, I think I know where Tabata is going with this. Looking into Magnus' character, he's never been a standout person in anything he has done. In fact, his backstory is the same as Aster's but the difference is, is that he has commoner low tier magic, something Aster would have been if he wasn't the main protagonist of the show. Magna, just like Aster, was bullied as a child for having a dream of wanting to be a magic knight. He was the first knight of his town which shocked everyone. Magna was always told he would never become special and throughout his life has to deal with prejudice that he is too weak and he's a failure. Essentially, Magna is a unique character to others in which he is both low born and has low tier magic. So I think Tabata will explore this isolated road of Magna's character in this time skip with him introducing a new concept of magic with him or him training with Zora to enhance his power since Zora has this ability which he had performed with Asta. Magna and Zora are in the same position essentially so why wouldn't they have a friendship? This will put imperative to what Black Clover does best, team battles and making us aware that united cooperation helps win fights. What's better than two peasants working together and proving wrong the nobles and other knights that peasants also have value? Moving on, after Luck remembers all of this, he gets into his fighting stance as we saw in the last chapter and this disciple dude starts talking all this crap. But my man just doesn't give a flying fuck about what he says because he says I'm a relevant character and you're fodder trash my guy. Tabata only wrote you in so I could develop and get a W under my bill. Know your fucking place, trash. Locke zooms in and instantly uses his runes, fearlessly trying to lay down that hurt. Now the fact is that he was able to get close to Zvenkin is a testament to Locke's speed because these guys are strong enough to off screen the spirit guardians. But he's also brave enough to get into this guy's face, knowing what he's capable of and almost dying. My boy Locke has always been this kind of person, he took on Veto without hesitation and Veto was definitely above his level at the time. So this isn't really shocking but now he's got the training to back up his actions like this. He goes in for a kick to the face and knowing Lux's speed and magical power, this would have bodied most people. But this dude Svenkin is a real weirdo and his skin sucks in Lux's leg. This is all so he can get another hit in himself but again Lux is just way too fast. However the Svenkin guy gets a little too excited because I think he's starting to have a thing for Lux. He naughty naughty. Lux is impressive and all but he still hasn't hurt Svenkin and now this guy is getting serious. He activates a spell called skin pot and brrr, this man is so gross his skin gets all mushy and starts shooting out he starts shooting out and i don't know how comfortable i am with describing this but he starts firing flesh bullets at luck at rapid speeds of course but as we all know the battle hungry idiot is just too fast and he's able to dodge all of these projectiles but my man is just not surviving he's building up speed getting himself ready for something huge he keeps batting svenkin around and mentally preparing himself for the final blow telling himself to get faster and faster. Finally, he begins to charge himself up before launching himself right through Svenkin with a blaze of lightning following him. Luck literally becomes true lightning itself. I'm fast as fuck, boy! Now, we don't know if he's totally down for the count, he looks dead, but for all we know, he could heal himself or use some devil secret magic shit to get back up as we've seen with Veto, Fauna, Patri and the word magic devil, even Dante at this point, so we have to wait and see. Overall, I think it's best to address the massive backlash within these last two chapters this way. The stage system in Black Clover was created for the mages of the Clover Kingdom to destroy it, more specifically the Black Bulls. This fits with the theme of Black Clover as Aster and the Black Bulls are the antithesis to their world and must rise above the systems put in place by society to make the world a better place. This was also proven immediately when they introduced the system in chapter 228 by declaring Aster to be stage 9 due to not having magic but he is now said to be so strong after the time skip that Guardian the Heart Queen was stunned and he's taking on Dante bruh. However, there is still no point in the constant use of the tier system. Seriously, we know Aster and his friends are always going to go against the grain in their world, so why continuously prove it? It just ends up confusing the shit out of the power scaling and adding pointless dialogues especially when a character can be strong or weak regardless of their tier and each tier has large gaps in them so Tabata really needs to cl start clarifying things even more. Let me make sense of all these chapters and try to end the debate by being neutral. Locke mastered runes within 6 months, he's 18 years old whilst Garja is a 
grown man that has a lot of experience who took two years to master it. This just leads us to believe that everyone in the Black Bulls must be prodigies. A god just states this in chapter 248 that luck is. He always has been. In the backstory, his mother starts treating him better after he defeats a noble quite easily whilst being a commoner. We all know nobles and royals are naturally meant to be superior due to the past corruption, but luck proves this wrong. Luck's potential wind rubbed many the wrong way because the guardians were hyped up. But realistically, Luck stated in the manga that he remembered how Lufulu the elf used his mana thus enhancing his mana control, right? William also said to us that people who were controlled by elves have some leftover enhanced power from them. So Luck does too. Also, since you guys know I have a degree in the anime bullshit science by the way, the power scaling also works around element affinities working against particular magic types such as Nozelle against the dark elf and Yami facing Dante with dark magic because dark magic counters gravity, right? So if you understand how lightning works, since the manga specifically says luck is literally using true lightning, lightning as an element has the piercing ability in real life too that it describes. However, to counter argue that and make this debate even longer in the comments section, Svenkin says his skin magic detects the type of magic he is fighting against and nullifies it quite like anti-magic. So this ability must be limited against real lightning as Gorgeous states that his spell is. Of course! So that means Luck's victory is in line with the power scaling. Still mind you, Gorgia was strong enough to spar with Prime Julius, the dude who was so powerful to part yeeted him back into a puberty and Majucula itself only to come back with a face cut. So Gorgia himself is strong so Luck's potential is infinite to me. It is reasonable reasonable to assume that all the spirit guardians are somewhat on the same tier of strength just as Austin, Yuno and Noel are the exact same strength but are never far behind of each other. However, the gap between Gorgia and the other spirit guardians is oceanic to say it best. That gap is huge. This is why people are understandably pissed at the recent scaling and it's genuine criticism but we all know Dubata is a GOAT and he said he is disappointed with the amount of pages he has produced because th life is hard fam. You know, this shit that's going on in real life we all know what's happening uh, he has a kid and a wife my man's tired i'm tired producing this shit myself so imagine his uh shoes man we need to start understanding one another you know what i'm saying anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the video make sure to get this to 30,000 likes as i said follow us on instagram and twitter join the discord community because we are all talking over there with there's 5,000 members already please buy the merch anyway guys i'll see you next time